Have you ever been in need of something? Say it was money to fix a vehicle and really didn't have the money, but you had to get that vehicle fixed. Or maybe you needed the money to buy groceries. Maybe it was to pay a bill or something like that. You wondered where the money was going to come from. You know it wasn't in your bank account. You knew you couldn't borrow the money. But then all of a sudden, you walk out to your mailbox and you open it up, you see this envelope and you, you look at it and you're like, what is this? It's not a bill. It's, you open it up and it's a check for maybe the exact amount that you needed. You think to yourself, wow, now that's right on time. I needed that right then. But what you didn't realize was God knew that you were going to need that all along. He provided you a way to get what you needed taken care of. I know we've had that happen to us before. We had unexpectedly received a $100 check in the mail. My wife's like, where did this come from? Come to find out that we had won a drawing that the local car wash had done. We had got our car washed and entered our name into a drawing. This was probably six months later. We hadn't heard nothing back from it. All of a sudden we get this $100 check in the mail right when we need it. God is so good. So gracious to do that for us. God provides for us every day in ways that we don't even realize it. He can provide for us even if He tells us to go somewhere. Even if He tells us to hide like He did Elijah. Whether if you'll put 1 Kings 17 verses 1 through 7 up before me. And Elijah the Tishbite of the inhabitants of Gilead said to Ahab, As the Lord God of Israel lives, before whom I stand, there shall not be dew nor rain these years, except at my word. Then the word of the Lord came to him, saying, Get away from here, and turn eastward, and hide by the brook chair, which flows into the Jordan. And it will be that you shall drink from the brook, and I commanded the ravens to feed you there. So he went and did according to the word of the Lord. For he went and stayed by the brook chair. Which flows into the Jordan. The ravens brought him bread and meat in the morning. And bread and meat in the evening. And he drank from the brook. And it happened after a while that the brook dried up. Because there had been no rain in the land. In this passage of scripture, God had hit Elijah to protect him. But while he was there, he made sure that he had food, he made sure that he had water. When the water ran out, it was time to go. Elijah had obeyed God, and God provided for his physical being. If you look at the first chapter of the first book of the Bible in Genesis you know, Adam and Eve they had, they had everything they needed right there in one convenient place the Garden of Eden was a beautiful place they had everything they might possibly need God provided everything for them he just had one request just donated the tree that's in the middle of the garden but what happened Eve let the serpent tempt her into eating of that tree. And at that point, God took those provisions away from them. You know, they had it made in the garden. They didn't have to do anything. They just had to play with the animals. and You know, Adam named all the animals for them. And 
They really didn't have to do much. But because they disobeyed God, He sent them away from it. Those punishments that came with that. They had to work for their food then. They had to toil the ground and plant the seeds and pick the weeds out. From then on, the women would have pain in childbirth. That's why it's so important that we have to stay within the provisions that God gives us today. God can provide whatever you need. You just give everything to Him. In 1 Kings chapter 17, verses 8-16, through 16, it's continuing along with Elijah. Then the word of the Lord came to him saying, Arise, go to Zarephath, which belonged to Sidon, and dwell there. See, I have commanded a widow there to provide for you. Once again, God sent him somewhere and he's still providing for him. So he rose and went to Zarephath, and when he came to the gate of the city, indeed a widow was there gathering sticks. And he called to her and said, Please bring me a little water in a cup that I may drink. And as she was going to get it, he called to her and said, Please bring me a morsel of bread in your hand. So she said, As the Lord your God lives, I do not have bread. Only a handful of flour in a bin and a little oil in a jar. And see, I am gathering a couple of sticks that I may go in and prepare for my son, myself and my son, that we may eat it and die. And Elijah said to her, Do not fear. Go and do as you have said, but make me a small cake from it first. And bring it to me, and afterward, make some for yourself and your son. For thus says the Lord God of Israel, The bin of flour shall not be used up, nor shall the jar of oil run dry, until the day of the Lord, the day the Lord sends rain on the earth. So she went away and did according to the word of Elijah. And she and her household ate for many days. The bin of flour was not used up, nor did the jar of oil run dry, according to the word of the Lord, which he spoke by Elijah. She didn't have hardly anything. She was going to go make that last cake for herself and her son, and then they were going to be through. But the prophet had told her, he said, God says, if you'll provide for me, he'll provide for you. If you'll give what you have left, he'll make sure that you have plenty. She obeyed the word that was given to her. And as God had promised, the things did not run, go away until it rained. can provide even the littlest things in life. The smallest little things that you might need, He can provide. The 2 Kings chapter 4 verse 1 through 7 says, A certain woman of the wives of the sons of the prophets cried out to Elisha, saying, Your servant, my husband, is dead. And you know that your servant feared the Lord. And the creditor is coming to take my two sons to be his slaves. So Elisha said to her, What shall I do for you? Tell me what you have in the house. And she said, Your maid servant has nothing in the house but a jar of oil. Then he said, Go, borrow vessels from everywhere, from all your neighbors, empty vessels. Do not gather just a few. And when you have come in, when you have come in, you shall shut the door behind you and your sons. Then pour it into all those vessels and set aside the full ones. So she went from him, shut the door behind her and her sons, who brought the vessels to her, and she poured it out. 
Now it came to pass, when the vessels were full, that she said to her son, Bring me another vessel. And he said to her, There is not another vessel. So the oil ceased. Then she came and told the man of God, and he said, Go sell the oil to pay your debt. And you and your sons live on the rest. Talk about a financial miracle. God was working those way back in the day also. He still does it today. Once again, she had just a little bit. But she obeyed God. She obeyed the word of God. She took that oil and just poured it into the vessel. Do you imagine having about this much oil and filling up a container about this big? Several times over. What a miracle. What a provision. What kind of things does what kind of things does God provide for us? Well, for first of all, he provides forgiveness from sins. Acts 2, 38 and 39, Then Peter said unto them, Repent, be baptized every one of you in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of your sins. You shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. Then he goes on to say, For the promise is unto you and to your children, to all that are far off, even as many as the Lord our God shall call. Forgiveness from sins. That's powerful. How about life? Eternal life in heaven. John 3.16 For God so loved the world that He gave His only begotten Son that whosoever believeth in Him should not perish but have everlasting life. There's going to come a day when the Lord comes back that we're going to go up to heaven and we're going to live forever with Him. It's not talking about eternal life here on earth and our mortal bodies but eternal life with Him. How about that mansion waiting in heaven? In John chapter 14, verses 2 through 3, it says, And my Father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you. I go to prepare a place for you. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you unto myself. And where I am, there you may be also. He's already getting a house ready for us. He's providing a roof for us right now. He provides comfort for us. In John chapter 14, verses eight, and verse 18, he says, I will not leave you comfortless. I will come to you. Even on those dark, dreary days, kind of like tonight, it's pouring down rain. You're sitting back and you're thinking to yourself, what am I going to do? Where am I going to go? God can comfort you. He can provide that comfort that you need. He provides healing. 1 Peter chapter 2, verse 24 who his own self bear our sins in his own body on the tree, that we, being dead to sins, should live unto righteousness, by whose stripes you were healed. Yes. Everything he did for us, he did it to provide for us. He provides substance for us. Pro Proverbs chapter 10, verse 3. The Lord will not suffer the soul of the righteous to famish, but it casteth away the substance of the wicked. You need something in your spirit tonight. He can provide for it. If you're hungry, He's got the food for you tonight. Peace. Second Thessalonians chapter 3, verse 16. Now the Lord of peace Himself 
give you peace always, by all means. The Lord be with you all. Think back to the old song, I know the peace speaker. I don't know about you tonight, but there's been times in my life I needed some peace. And it's so wonderful because you can just lift your hands and call in the name of God. He can send that peace that you need. He can provide refuge for you. Psalms chapter 9, verse 9, it says, The Lord also will be a refuge for the oppressed, a refuge in times of trouble. We sing that song around here a lot of times. He will hide me under the rock. And I'll be safe in the time of trouble. He's that refuge you can go to. You lose your job or you lose your house. It doesn't matter. You can go to him and find refuge. You can go to him and find that peace and the comfort that you need. There's nothing that he can't provide for us. Our God is a God that provides all of our needs. You go to the Chinese restaurants and you see that little golden statue sitting on their counters. Of Buddha. What has Buddha ever provided for anybody? Besides some, maybe some money for people selling it. Our God has the power to provide what we need. When I first started preparing for this message, I kind of had the, the thought of, you know, what happens if you step away from the provisions of God? As you see in when we're talking about Adam and Eve, they lost everything they had there. They lost all the good stuff. They were forced to work for what they needed. You know, church, I don't wanna I don't want that to happen to us. We have to stay in his provisions tonight. Because that is where the peace is. That's where the refuge is. That's where the grace of God is tonight. Every day when we get up, we need to thank God for providing for us. The little things that actually have a big impact. The air we breathe. The breath that's in us. You know, when he made Adam, he breathed life into him. He didn't do that with anything else. We need to thank him for that breath. We need to thank him for that blood that flows through our veins. It goes through our heart and pumps throughout our heart through our bodies. But most importantly, we need to thank Him for providing Himself for us. Because He shed His blood so that we can be with Him in heaven and walk on those streets of gold singing praises to Him. He provided the debt that we should be owing to him right now. It's it's kind of fun, funny sometimes that you know when you have a bill that has to be due, you have somebody that you owe. You're doing everything you can to pay them. It's just like we, we really owe God a lot. 
that's somebody we'll never be able to repay for that debt that he paid for us. He provided a way for us so that we can live a life without sin. So we can live a life without bondage or addictions. He provided us a way that we can have a, a life of peace and joy. I don't know about you, but I'm thankful for the provisions that he gives us. I'm thankful every day that I can get up out of my bed and get in my truck and go to work and make a living for my family. I'm glad that I live in America where we, can, we have the freedoms that we do. There's so much to be thankful for. There's so much that we take for granted that we don't realize that really God's providing for us. The next time you have a need, maybe, you, maybe you'll have something that needs fixed around your house or a vehicle that may need fixed or something. But you don't know where the money's going to come from. Just trust in God. Because he can provide. That first scripture we read tonight. My God shall supply all your needs. According to his riches and glory by Christ Jesus. Such a powerful, powerful scripture there. All we have to do is. Pray and ask God to. Provide for us in those situations. You need a healing? Ask God. You need a financial miracle? Just ask God. You need direction? Ask God. He can provide those answers for you. Anything else you need an answer to? He's provided the word that we can go through, we can search the scriptures. And find out what we need in there. Our God provides tonight. Yes, he does. Can we stand? And can we just lift our hands and ask God and thank God, sorry, for providing for us in every day. Anything that we need, He provides for us. If there's something that you need tonight, why don't you just ask God for it right now? You know, it may not come right when you want it, but it's going to come right on time. Can we just lift our voices to Him right now? Lord, I thank you, Jesus. We praise you, God. We thank you, Lord Jesus, for providing for us, oh God. Lord, we thank you, we praise you, Holy Name. We thank you for everything right now, Lord Jesus. We thank you for the presence we have. We thank you, Jesus. The life that we have, Lord. Thank you for dying on the cross for our sins, Lord. Lord, we praise you, O God, for everything right now, Lord Jesus. Thank you for providing for our lives, O God. Thank you for being the comfort and the peace that we have, O God. Thank you, Lord Jesus, for providing in our times of need, God. Healing us in our time of need. Lord, we thank you, Jesus. Praise your holy name, God. Thank you, mighty God. Thank you, mighty God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. He is a provider tonight. Hallelujah. As you go from this place tonight, don't forget to thank you for the things that he's done for you. There's been so many times in my life that I have to be thankful for the things that he's done for me. The times that I shouldn't have made it out of wrecks. The times that I shouldn't have been standing behind a full pit now. We have a lot to be thankful for, church. We have a lot to be thankful for for the provisions that God gives us. We are dismissed in Jesus' name.